The, you know how deep it is at, uh, at, at the area we're talking about? Well, most of the tar that you're trying to describe is somewhere close to the 5,000 feet down, out of the reach of a hurricane. What is in reach are tar mats that may in fact be in the shallow water that are in fact residues. But they're residues from the bacteria metabolizing the oil. The purpose of the dispersant, which I don't agree with the use of, don't misunderstand me, but the purpose was to in fact create the micro droplets, which the, frankly the natural gas and the pressure and heat at depth probably did without any correction. But the point was to increase the surface area of the petroleum product so that the microorganisms, the bacteria in the Gulf, that have evolved over thousands and thousands of years to deal with all of the natural oil and gas that's released from the Gulf of Mexico is capable of doing that. And there was an enormous bacterial bloom, which in fact took care of the vast majority of the toxic and volatile compounds, leaving behind the asphaltines, which do in fact settle to the bottom. The asphaltines are not toxic at nearly the levels of the volatiles that the bacteria consume. If Asphalt is what we put on the roads. I, I understand not, that. Okay, but it's not a toxic material per se. It is an ugly black material that is down on the bottom. It occurred after Ixtoc in Texas waters off of Mexico. Now there are corals growing on large black accumulations of tar in the lagoons of, of eastern Mexico. So in other words, Mother Nature is trying to heal itself. I, absolutely, and did a tremendous job. You know, so I think that I, if... Chair, if you all will post this PowerPoint, I would be glad to deal with each slide as they went. But we have listened to this alarmist material long enough now. There's somebody else that wants to make a statement. Why don't you make some statements that people want to listen to? Anything. Yeah. If you say anything, people will listen to it, George. Island and Orange Beach when oil washed up. I have sick people in this room that live in Orange Beach and Dolphin Island, so don't tell me it's all good, bud. That was then. Why are they sick now? At least it hasn't been boring. Let me just uh, tell y'all who he is. George Crozier is a... Payroll, exactly. He's a PhD, uh, I guess, oceanographer. Whatever. I really... He's uh, got a pretty good outside shot, too. But he um, he was a former head of the, the, the Dolphin Island Sea Lab and may have been part of the founder of the Sea Lab because he's been around almost as long as the sea's been around. But I, And George and I have spoken over the years. Post the, post the uh, PowerPoint. Did, did um, Dolphin Island Sea Lab get BP money? They did. Yes, they did. They got a millions of grants. I don't think y'all got ten million, or they got ten million. There you go. Something so, uh, like that. That's why they so negative. Well, I, I understand what they're you know they're 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 saying a bunch of stuff, but have you has anybody heard anything out of like like what came out of this mouth posted anywhere? Every day, every day from BP. Every oil's gone. BP. No, 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 no. No. What no. what George said, and and it does make sense. Is, is, is that 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 the the biggest area that we're talking about? He's saying it's it's five thousand feet down. Uh, I don't think it's quite that deep, but if he's saying that a hurricane, a Category Five hurricane, is not going to touch any of it, you uh, and I, I'm I'm wondering where he gets his information yeah, from, the experience, and knowing what's down there, and knowing what a five Category Five hurricane does to it, and then I mean I you know. I, I, but plus, what you're talking about, it's natural. There's nothing natural about what's going on out That's there. That's right. It's not natural. Mm -mm. One question I would have as well is where have you seen the microbial blooms? Because Dr. Samantha Joy has determined there that there were absolutely zero microbial blooms. Uh, yes. No, there is following the uh, following uh, spill. Uh, well, miles more the majority of the reports that I've seen and reviewed, including the, the former chair of the Department of Biology at the University of Alabama, mm -hmm. There was a major report put out that indicated that there was an enormous bloom. And of course, one of the ironies of this is Vibrio happens to be one of the species sure. that does, in fact, metabolize these exotic yeah, uh, carcinogenic, and there's, there's an issue of that. But the, the overall, the overwhelming consensus of the scientific population, whether it was funded by BP or not, is that the microbial flora and fauna, basically, of the Gulf 
are adapted to deal with these components. They are not afraid of it. They are not able. They are not killed by it. George, they are adapting. They weren't adapted immediately. They've never seen compounds like this. Right. Well, they see them all the time. For exit, mixed with, with, uh, with sweet crude at 10,000 feet, at, at 5,000 feet, and 10,000 PSI of methane. Dr. That's Dr. never Dr. happened Dr. before. Dr. Jury's studies if also recently established that correction mixed with oil. Correction, in fact, prevented microbial blooms within the areas mm -hmm. that you studied. I don't like the correction. Don't get me wrong. The correction is toxic. That, that I've never questioned That's that. pretty much what we're talking about. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Oil. And you're talking about well, oil. Being oil blown I'm talking about oil that's been affected by mixing with correction. That's different from... Disperse right. oil. When it is dispersed, it is degraded by the system, leaving the asteroid. I don't think so. No. Well, I'm so oh, if y'all believe him, that's fine. That well, that we're we're, 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 citing, we're citing outside sources here. I mean, I, I, I know that I'm citing Dr. Joy's sources right now, but we're talking about an area surrounding the Macondo well, within two miles, or within 30 miles of the Macondo well. Right, so at great There's been absolutely well. zero microbial bloom, and there has not, there, no, I'm sorry, thank you very much. Uh, where we have we have not seen a microbial bloom. Uh, the bloom occurred in the, the bloom occurred in the plumes that Samantha reported oh, at the very site, and took that the, the whole process in. I don't think the correction was smart. I don't think the correction did much for it. I never thought from the images I saw that it was being applied effectively, and it was not. Uh, you know, there's never thought it was going to work on the stuff on the frankly on the surface. That's why they stopped using it. Went down below, and it was dumb. And it didn't look like it was applied effectively. They didn't stop so using it on the surface. Right. They continued they using it. Well, it. They sprayed it from airplanes. <laughs> right. And realized and that it was and not boats, effective on the accumulated material. And they dumped it at the wellhead. Pardon me? Gee, they dumped it at the wellhead. They, they, they dumped had a, it at the wellhead. Don't tell me. I know. I saw the pictures, too. And they had they, this thing that was spraying a white material out that wasn't even in the bloom from the well. I saw the pictures. I saw the pictures. time for a drink. What? Well, we do know we've got another great presenter tonight. So, But we do know that what we're talking about is dispersed oil. And we're talking about a lot of unknowns, still unknowns. And um, I think what we're doing actually is, even though we're having a very vibrant discussion, we're actually still asking a lot of questions. And we will be asking a lot of questions. Um, if there is an eye of a hurricane, if the hurricane is, is on, on ground zero, it would be very different than just a hurricane in the vicinity. So we, we're not going to come in about hurricanes. Let me too just much conclude to say, to say that we're asking questions because we want to know. That's if we right. don't know something, and there's some information out there that we can know, you know, these kind of people would like to know it, George. So if you have a response you'd like to give us. But, but, I think there's still a lack of a, 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 you know, the, the a problem, lack of information, and that's why we're all still concerned. Um, I, I, we've heard a lot, but we still have this still a lot to know, and we still have reoccurring situations, and we want answers. And I'm not sure, well, you know, it's hard to define those. We have one more question, and then we're going to start our other presentation. Thank you. Um, I'm a commercial net maker. All right. And all my fishermen are still telling me they're getting exposed to this stuff. Now, this gentleman, I want him to hear this because it's important for him to know that it's still in the environment because my fishermen are still getting exposed to it. I know this for a fact, and I refuse their nets. They're used gear out of the gut. I refuse to work on them because I've been heavily exposed through their gear. And I don't want to be exposed anymore. And I, I, they tell me that they are still being toxified just like they were when they were putting the stuff on the oil. The people that was working, the boot program as they called it, they were working... For this, and they're still being toxified. They tell me they're they still having the same symptoms, and that they go to the hospital and they stay in the hospital for a week and they get better. Well, they they get cleaned up, you know, they get detoxed. They go back to work. There it is again. So they're still being exposed, and it's still out there. And this plankton bloom you talk about—that's grand and all. Maybe it was eating something, but it's not eating this correction like like you think, because it's still out there. And you can you can say well no 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 but it is because my fishermen are still telling me this it is. Where? I'm, I, I'm from Biloxi, Mississippi, so. Yeah, that's 
Uh, one of the things that I think needs to be Thank said you. is that the geography is important because if you go all the way back to Bay Jimmy, there are extraordinarily bad uh, effects there. The further, the further away you were from the spill geographically, the more the toxicity was reduced. And, right. and that, I don't, I don't doubt what you're saying at all. Uh, the, the materials are there and they can cause the rashes. My, my only point is enough. that it's what, worse what Bob has presented is going to make people think that they have to protect their houses from Panama City. And by the way, there's, there's oh, no 2,000 foot trees. The City. last meeting I went to was in uh, Mobile at some uh, big... Uh, uh, it's Mobile. It's down in, in a right. little farther down. It's, it was a big uh, resort down there. I went to this meeting, and I ran across the lady that said that that uh, surfers in Florida was having the same effects and, and, and stuff that my fishermen were having. I, so we, I talked to her, and they're surfers in Florida, and that they was having this problem. I, I, I'm so, then whatever the problem is, I find it very difficult to believe that it could that be it come from the oil. From a deep horizon. Uh, no, sir. It, it wasn't there before. My feet, my have you read why? Sir, okay, no. We, we now I'm have to go to my next yeah, program, sorry. and we're really it excited about it. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you, Bob. We've had a lot of programs regarding these subject matters, and um, we appreciate the expertise that's in the room and appreciate everybody's comments. And that's what we're about, is getting to the truth. So it's not an easy task. Not an easy task.